Hi friends, it's Peggy Noe from PrettyPaperCards.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm here today with my little Yorkshire Terrier, Ellie. And we are excited to be here today. If you watched last week, I was not in my craft room. I was in a different room. I was in my husband's office because the um, connection, the wireless and wired and whatever connection was having a hard time. So we think we have it fixed. My husband's been working hard. He's been very sweet to, to get it fixed. So I'm going to see. We're on today. We're live. I'm so excited to see that. Yay. So I hope it stays that way. Um, if you start seeing any trouble, let me know. And um, Carol Schaefer, good to see you. Linda, good to see you. I'm so excited that we're back in the craft room. It was hard to move all my stuff to the other room. And so I'm just so happy to be back. And I'm happy that you're here today. Happy Wednesday. Um, oh my gosh, yesterday was a crazy day here. We lost our power two times yesterday. One time it was off for about four hours, three to somewhere between three and four hours. And the next time it was only out for a few minutes. But every time that happens, everything goes down. You know how that is. We all have so many electronic things and, um, you know, not only the clocks on the stove and stuff, but the router for the, um, you know, internet, whatever, Wi-Fi all went down. And so my husband had to keep resetting it. Oh my gosh, it was, and I was supposed to get my faith creations classes out yesterday um, as far as the videos and all of that. And I had no power and no Wi-Fi connection. So everything was delayed a day on that. And so, yeah, it was, that was kind of crazy. It was, wasn't our house. It was, it was our uh, SDG and E, San Diego Gas and Electric. Something happened, but hopefully we're all back today. And Mary Ellen, good to see you from cold Massachusetts. Oh, my son lives in Massachusetts. Hi, Linda. I think I said hi to you before. Kay, good to see you from North Carolina. Mary Ellen, where in Massachusetts do you live? And Tracy is in Connecticut. Um, Kay, let's see. Shared, thank you so much, Kay. Um, Mary Ellen, my son lives in Williamstown, Massachusetts, um, which is in kind of the north. Minda, aloha, Minda. Miss Miss Minda, who is in Hawaii, I hope you are having nice weather there today. Um, so, yes, so our power was out. Oh, Mary, Mary Ellen, Marlboro. Oh, Marlboro, why do I know where that is? That, yes, I know where that is. Very lovely, but I know, cold and snowy, I think, right now. So good to see all of you. And I'm so happy you're here. Cherie, good to see you. I know that's you. Um, well, we've got a fun fold card to make today on Friday. For those of you who were with me on Friday, I showed you. I'm going to put Ellie down so I can really show you some things. I showed you this adorable fun fold card that I got from uh, a friend of mine. And it opens up. And you all wanted to make it so this is what we're making today but different colors a little different paper but i'm going to show you how to make this so you might want to get out um, a paper and pen or something if you want to take jot down the dimensions i always say i'm going to put them in but i usually forget i probably will put them in my blog post tomorrow um, so but i'll tell them to you today so if you want to jot them down get ready um, Pam, good to see you from North Carolina. Carol, three New England people. I know, we're popular with, with New England, aren't we? Oh, Minda, cool for, cool for Minda in Hawaii at 70. That is many times us, but we've been pretty, pretty cool. We've been in the 60s um, here. Mary Ellen, what, why does your craft room look so beautiful? <laughs> well, you're not seeing the desk. I've got my desk clean for this, but when I am making 
and creating it is a tornado i'm telling you and when i put together those faith creation classes any of my classes to go it's it's a tornado it absolutely is maybe i'll show you sometime but i don't really want to <laughs> okay so what we need to be reminded of um celebration okay celebration is only two months this year in 2023 and there's only one celebration during the year so Fe january and february are the only uh, months for celebration so we're almost halfway through so if there is i hope you all have the celebration catalog if you don't email me peggy at prettypapercards.com and i'll get one out to you with all of the current catalogs renee good to see you from columbus ohio you're riding the bus on your way home from work very good as far as not not adding more cars to the system good job renee um so if if you have things in here that you haven't gotten there are quite a few fabulous products in here and if there's something you haven't gotten yet you've only got a month more to get it um, the items are free with a minimum $50 order and some are with a minimum $100 order um, so far everything is still in stock but you know how those things go so I want to tell you if there's something you really want snatch it up while you can because there are not as many choices I don't think this year as others and so I want to make sure you get what you need um, Diane, Janet, good to see you. You're a little shaky with your internet. Boy, do I understand that. Okay, um, starter kit special. You guys know how I feel about this little guy. So cute. And I have some news, something to tell you about um, getting the plates through. I found a new way to do it. Some people in the leaders group were talking about it, and we're going to try it today and see if it works. So be sure to stay tuned. But anyway, the adorable um, boho blue mini machine only available when you get the starter kit in January and February um, and it's 100 let me get the right price now $129 is your price and you get the boho blue mini machine or you can choose the white mini machine and $175 worth of Stampin' Up! product of your choice. There's a link up above or down below if you're here on Facebook or YouTube. Look both places. Hello to all my YouTube friends. I so appreciate you guys. And um, it's an amazing deal. You're going to want the Boho Blue Mini. I promise you. Now, if you already have a mini and you want the starter kit, $99.00. And you'll get $175 worth of Stampin' Up! products of your choice. It's like a no-brainer if you love the product. And from that point on, 20% off on everything you order. And then you can get up to 25% off. That's what many of us get. So really, if you love, if you love Stampin' Up!, do it now. It's a great offer. And you'd be on my team. My team is called the Sweet Stampers, my team of demonstrators. Um, they Many, many are just hobby demonstrators who just buy the starter kit for the great price and then they have so much fun, they just stay. Um, you don't have to do what I do. I just love it, so I keep doing it. Okay, that was the starter kit special. And then um, what I wanted to show you is my host code gift this month, some of you know, is the Raindrops embossing folder so if you place a $50 order in my online shop use my host code for January this is only good till January 31st and it's also written up above for uh, Facebook and below for YouTube people use this host code place a $50 or more order in my store I will send you this as your free gift and you'll get to choose a free item from celebration it's a great time to order Stampin' Up! products. And this is such a fun embossing folder. We're going to use it on a live here pretty soon. Okay, fun fold card. Ready? Let me turn you down and we are going to get started. Let me get my computer out of the way a little bit there. Okay, um, Roz, good to see you. So this is my friend Judith's card and we love it, don't we? 
this is what you guys wanted to make and I want to make it too and I've been I've made it already out of one color and here is the one I made and because I wanted to play today I have had not even had a chance to play with the nested friends bundle this is an adorable adorable bundle and it's this bird you know we have birds almost all the time we have a stamp set with the bird but I think this bird is so sweet it's really one of the sweeter little birds that we've had and I just wanted to play with this set I wanted it and the dies you guys okay here's here's there are three different nests and this is what I want to tell you um Linda, I have been a demonstrator for 10 years. I just last year in 2022 had my 10 year anniversary, but I haven't been pursuing it as much. I wasn't in the early years because I was still working as a paralegal. And then I retired in, I think 2016 or 2017. And I didn't have anything to do. So I started doing uh, Stampin' Up! more and pursuing, pursuing it more. And then I started you know, really working at it. But until then, I just played and had friends over and we played and made pretty things. Okay, so here's what I wanna tell you about these dies. One, two, three different nest dies. And let me show you what they do. This large one right here goes around the stamp. So if you wanted to um, stamp and then cut, you would use this large one. This one I have not used yet. It's uh, It embosses, and this I'm anxious to try that. But this is the one we're going to use today. It's a full-on nest with little little pieces, and it created this. If you, I'll try to raise it up so you can see. Here's the little nest. Lots of little um, intri intricate little things, and that's why I wanted to use it. And then we're going to use the bird. And then you have a branch and leaves. But these are the two we're going to use today. Okay, um, so, and here's the little envelope. I put a bird on the side of the, on oh, covered him up. There's the bird on the envelope, and here's how the card works. It opens like this, and I put a little bird inside. But I thought what we might do is make a different color. Would you like to make a different color one just for fun? So we're gonna make a balmy blue one today. But let me show you, in case you're looking, in the catalog, it's this, a bundle is on page 25 and it's $52. You love the nest in the bird, Marsha. Thank you. Um, so one thing I wanted to say is this bundle is $52. So that would give you your $50 purchase right there. So you'd get a free gift from the celebration catalog and you'd get the um, raindrops embossing folder from me. All righty, let's get started here. So I thought we would use balmy blue and we're going to use this, we're going to use some gingham paper because that's what the sample used. And this is a sheet from the Country Floral Lane paper. It has a really pretty back. All this paper is gorgeous. Now I'm going to also tell you if you like this paper and you don't have it, as I always say, order it pronto. I have heard nothing except for the fact that the punch that goes with this suite is sold, is not sold out, but it's um, not available now and it won't be back till April. So if you like this paper, don't put off getting it um, just because. Okay, so let's get started. And if you're ready to write things down, I'm going to get my paper trimmer out. So our card base I'm going to put the um, embossing blade up out of the way on my paper trimmer because I'm not embossing now. The card base is eight and a half by four and a half. Now you could do one of two things. One half of this, excuse me, four and a quarter. One half of this sheet is four and a quarter, but also this length is eight and a half. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it this is going to be already be eight and a half and I'm going to put it at four and a quarter here and just cut it right like that. And then I'm going to get my cutting blade out of the way and I'm going to score at four and a quarter and that should make it a, a square. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and burnish that so we get that fold nice and nice and um, flat. Okay, because we want our we want our card to fold down really nice now we have a second card if you remember there are two cards there's the first card which is this one that pulls out this way and this is your little second card so this card is um, four by no that's not right it's seven by three so let's go set we have to pull out our arm here put our embossing blade up out of the way so we're going to cut at seven right there and then we're going to cut at three inches right here so seven by three and scored at three and a half so we'll put our put it right there at three and a half and we'll do our scoring blade okay and we can put this down and I'm going to set it to the side for just a bit and we're going to go ahead and burnish this score line so that we have both of our cards it's a little two card card right a little two card card okay so we're going to go ahead and burnish that all right now to create we know this is going to open this way and then we want a triangle right here so to do that we're going to get back our paper trimmer, get out our cutting blade, okay, and what we want to do, we know the card opens this way, we know we want to cut the triangle like this. So what I'm going to do is put my card in, and this is your little, what I think they call it a trough, T-R-O-U-G-H, where the blade goes. So I want to put the point there, the point of that corner on the trough, and I want to put the fold line right there. And then I hold it perfectly <laughs> and cut. And let's see how it turned out. It turned out great. That's exactly how it's supposed to go. Bommy blue is one of your favorite colors. Okay, yes it is, one of mine too. Anthony, good to see you. Good to see you. And uh, Tammy, good to see you also. Okay, so now we have our triangle. And sometimes if this becomes isn't totally flat after you cut it, I would just use my bone folder and kind of flatten that a little bit. Sometimes after cutting, it's it just kind of raises up. So now we have our two cards, right? Now we need to put little white pieces inside. We want to give a white background here and a little white background inside to write on. So let me pull my pieces out here. I'm going to see if I cut them. I think I did. Okay, this, because we know that this is a four and a quarter square card, this is four and a quarter, okay? We want to put a four inch square piece of white, basic white cardstock inside. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll get that down. And then we can continue. Okay. Just like this. Make sure it's as best we can that it's even on all, all the edges are even, kind of framed well. And then we'll take our little mini one and let's see if I, let's see, I think this might be the piece that goes in here. Yes, I did cut that. And this is two and three quarters. Let me open it. The, this white piece is two and three quarters by three and one quarter. Okay, so we're going to put this down just like that. And this this gives us something to write on. Okay. Now we're going to do some more before we before we put these two together. And the thing we're going to do is we need to cut our gingham to go on the front of our big card. So what I'm going to do is bring back my paper trimmer and I already know 
th this card is four and a quarter by four and a quarter, right? And I cut diagonally. If I want it to come in a little bit from the edge, just like the white piece, the white piece is four by four. So I'm, this is my thinking. Someone, I'm not that great with numbers. Someone else might think of, of a better way to think about it. But I decided to make a four by four square out of the gingham paper. It'll give me an extra one too for a second card. And then I'm just gonna cut from one corner to the other, just kind of in the same manner that I did the cardstock. And just go straight up. And now the test. Da, 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 da. Let's see if it works. And I think it will. And there we go. It fits perfectly. I'm always so happy when my math works out because I am, I can do math. I really can. But it's just it's not my favorite thing. And when I found out that stamping had to do with math, I'm like, oh my gosh. Something so pretty has to do with math. But you know, I've learned over the years, everything has to do with math. It's really true, don't you think? So we're gonna glue that down. And now we've got our, we've got that part of our card all ready. And it makes two, right, Marcia? Hi, Holly, good to see you. Linda, yeah, math is not my favorite thing. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and let's see what we should do next. I think we'll go ahead and, and cut the um, designer series paper from for the front of our mini card here. And for that, we need to get our um, paper trimmer back. And this is going to be basically the same size that the white the, the designer series paper is going to be the same size as the white inside, which is two and three quarters by three and a quarter. So let's get that cut. So let's go for three and a quarter first. A piece that's three and a quarter, and then two and three quarters. And this should be the right size. Let's give it a little test here. Okay. And that hopefully, yep, that fits right on there just perfectly. Okay. I think so many of these, this this whole country floral lane suite is beautiful. And I'm just well, it's the it's and it's the country floral suite in the country floral lane paper, I think, is the way it the way they say it. And there we go. Okay. <laughs> Roz. <clears throat> a bonus of a pretty <laughs> of a pretty project is a bonus of after you use the math. You are right. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we have to glue the little card into inside of the bigger card. And it's really not hard. I'm so glad there's really no math involved. All we have to do is center it and put it in the center. Center it top and bottom and center it side to side. First, I'm going to again really press that down because it's nicer when the card really folds flat. Okay, so we're ready and we're just going to put our multi-purpose liquid glue right on the back and I think I'm going to do just a little more than usual because I want it to be sure to stick in there and then we just put it in here and this is what I love about the multi-purpose liquid glue is you can move it around and get it really centered so we'll press it down and here's the test are you ready Ta -da! look at that it works great. Isn't that great? So that is your basic card. And then you just decorate it in any way that you want. But that's that's the basic card that you wanted to see. Um, it is, so it's a four and a quarter square card. And I have the envelope that I, I get these. And I've given this to you before. And I'll, I'll definitely have it tomorrow. Well, I'll try to put it on Facebook tonight again. I get these from Amazon. I believe they're four and a half by four and a half. I'm sure they are. 
because they fit the four and a quarter by four and a quarter card. And it may take an additional stamp, you guys, some of you might know, um, but I do think, <laughs> Roz, voila, yes, voila. I think, I think I usually put two stamps on it because I do think because it's a different size, they want it to be, um, they add an extra stamp. All right, now, now we get to bring our little boho blue mini up here and we are going to cut that nest out. And I decided to use um, some of the same color from the other card and that is petal pink. And the reason is because this paper has little dots of petal pink in it. And I thought rather than having too much blue, that would be nice. Now, I want to tell you what I found out. Um, and I'm going to try it today, and you guys can try it with me. And someone actually suggested this the other day, I think, on my live. Um, as far as having trouble, people having trouble getting your plates to run through. Someone, and they put this on our um, leaderboard someone posted it that if you use the number three light gray plate as your base and then put the two number two plates i can turn this around they both say number two so three on the bottom instead of one use three the number three light gray plate and then the two number two plates and you run your die through that and you don't have to stagger. Now this, we'll try it, okay, because this is what they said and they claim everybody can have great success. So let's give it a try. And just to prove the theory, let's make sure all of the plate edges are even and we're gonna give this a test because you know how I usually stagger them back about a quarter of an inch. So here we go. Wow, it totally works totally works. Okay, you guys, use the number three gray plate. And it should, it comes with your mini. Let's make sure, yep, that cut all the way through. So, wonderful. Got it? I probably will write about that a little bit in my, um, in my blog post tomorrow. So here's our little nest, and I think it cut all the way through. I'm pretty sure it did. Let's just poke it out here. And I'm just gonna get my little, um, this is our tool. What's it called? The tool? You guys, some of you can remember. It just gets those little things out. It's an all-purpose tool, and it has this little brush attachment. You're welcome, Tina. I hope it works for you. Roz has been doing that sandwich for, for a long time. At first it was awkward, but it works. I'm so glad we have a permanent solution. That is fabulous. Okay, so we've almost got all these little, um, take your pick tool, that's it, take your pick tool. That's the name of the Stampin' Up! one. Okay. Let's get these other little guys out here. It may, I maybe should have run it through twice, but no, it looks like, okay, it looks like they're all coming out. That's a good thing. But you see what I mean about this nest? Isn't it just neat? I've never seen a die quite like this. You know, I could picture this being a good, I don't even really make Halloween cards unless they're cute cutesy Halloween cards, but I can see this nest in black being good for Halloween. It looks a bit spooky if you don't put the sweet bird on it, don't you think? Okay, let's get rid of all my little crumbs. Just for fun, I'm going to put it on here so you can see all the detail. Do you see that? Oh, here's what's up with that. Okay, that's a little piece that needs to be flattened. Can you see how detailed that is? Isn't that just neat? I just think it's the neatest little nest. I really like it. Okay, so we've got our nest, and now what we're going to do is we are going to stamp our bird, and we're going to color him just a tad, just a tiny bit, with some Stampin' Blends. So yesterday when I was making this sample, I just got too carried away and really I just really, I even trimmed my stamp a little bit because I thought it was the stamp that I kept getting lines over there, but it turned out it was just me, just me being too 
anxious I get, guess. So there is that bird. Look how cute he is. And I'm just going to go ahead and color him a tiny bit before we um, die cut him. So what I'm going to do, he's already stamped in the balmy blue. I use the balmy blue for stamping. So I'm going to give him a little um, petal pink tummy. This is the light petal pink. And I'm just going to go ahead and it only takes like two seconds to get this in there. And then we might add just a tad bit of shading. But these two colors go with the paper and that's a, that's a good thing. Okay, now I'm going to take just a little bit of the dark, um, stamp, the dark petal pink and I'm going to just put that a little bit out on the edge just to give a little, um, a little bit of contrast there and a little bit right around his neck there. I'll do a little bit more. Make it just to kind of make it show a bit. Now I was debating. I want I want your opinion. So on this bird, this little one, the paper had a red in it. I think I used Poppy Parade. And I gave the bird a little red beak. Now on this one, there is no red in this paper. So do you think I should still give him a little red beak? Let me know what you think. Um, it's almost worth using an A2 envelope, says Renee, um, because you'd save a stamp. You know, that is true with postage going up so much. So let me know if you think, should I do a, should I do a little, what, I have Poppy Parade here. Should I do a little light Poppy Parade beak? Kay says no. You want that, you think we should do the petal pink. Okay, all right. Looks like everybody says petal pink, no, no red. All right, so let's use the dark petal pink and we'll give him just a petal pink beak right there. And I'll color it a little bit more. Okay, then he just blends in perfectly. I'm with you. Okay, so now we're ready to cut this little guy out. And there's a die from the bundle that just fits perfectly. So let's get him up there. And let's just put that right around him. I think that's pretty, pretty right on right there. And we've got our plates even. I might pull that down just a tiny bit. So we'll put this plate right over and run that through. Wow, okay you guys, I am very happy with this gray number three plate. That is the solution. Okay. And there's our cute little bird. And I think that's all we need for the um, for the uh, mini die machine, die cutting machine. Okay, so now here we are and we're ready to put our nest on. You see what I mean about the card popping up a little bit? I really want it, I want it to lay flat. Let's try this again. All right, well I think what I'm gonna do is pull this the triangle off to the side so we can work more with the mini, the little card in the center. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue on our nest. Now, I think we talked in one previous uh, live that I did about tiny, tiny dots. There's a little piece that's still on there. Okay. Just tiny, tiny dots. And of course we could, we could have done it other ways, but I'm just going to go with the tiny dots shake it just a bit and it doesn't take whoops it doesn't take too many dots and then when we put the bird over it um, we will be using some dimensionals so that can one dimensional so that can additionally hold down the nest so just a few and not toward the edges because the edges poke out over the little card okay so here we go and see that just works perfectly just some little tiny dots and then we're ready to put our bird on and let's get one whoops I don't think I have my dimensionals out where are they 
here we go. Okay. And the bird perfectly fits one. Well, you could possibly put two dimensionals, but it perfectly fits one. So let's just, and he's kind of a standing up bird. We have to notice that, a little bit of a standing. See how he's kind of standing in an upright position? Or she, it could be a she. Okay, now all we need to do is our sentiment and some bling. So I'm gonna use the rest of that little piece I had. Now here's another choice for you. I'm thinking I'm gonna, I was thinking of possibly doing it in red, but because we didn't in the poppy, but because we didn't do his beak in poppy, I'm gonna go ahead and do the sentiment in balmy blue. And I've chosen to use this sentiment. Yep, it's from this set. It's a great thank you. I'm always looking for great thank you sentiments because I send a lot of thank you cards. Isn't that a great thank you sentiment? Good font, casual, friendly. Oh, Wink of Stella. Good idea, Cherie. He is sweet, Linda. I totally agree. Okay, so we're going to just trim. You could use a label die, but um, many times, many, many times, I like to just trim out my sentiment. And especially, I think, here, because we don't have a tremendous amount of room there. Although a label would be fine, a label die. You know, we have a lot of really pretty ones. But I'm just going to cut right around like this. It's just kind of a modern thing. They do it a lot nowadays. And so it's, and it's just a small bit, even if you don't really like what we call fussy cutting, this is easy peasy. Okay, here we go right around the Y, and then we're done, just like that. Okay, and this we are going to put on with mini dimensionals. I just have, I forgot to bring my dimensionals. They're, they're hiding back here. So let me find them. Where, where are you, mini dimensionals? Okay, here we go. And this, I'm going to put about three mini dimensionals to hold this going across. Okay. Number three. Okay. Just like that. Let's see. Okay. Get my papers off. There we go. Marsha, did you want to have the red beak? <laughs> okay, let's put the thank you right in here like this. And there we go. Isn't that cute? Now this time I did not use the oval background. The last time I did, this time I did not. I kind of think maybe the oval background looked better. But I decided to try it without. So let's bring some bling in and I've got some champagne rhinestones which I thought would look really great and I use them on the sample here too. So uh, let's bring in some champagne rhinestones and put those around. I think we could actually put them in the nest. That's what I kind of did with the other one. Put a few little champagne rhinestones right in here in his, whoops, where did that go? I find rhinestones later on my socks and all kinds of stuff. Do you guys do that? <laughs> Shh, don't tell. Don't tell anyone. It's a secret. Okay, there's one little rhinestone. I also found, find dimensional tops. I bet you guys do too. You love the fun fold, Minda. I, I like this too. It's a simple one. And you know, you can do the same there, I've done one similar to this with a full-size card, so we definitely could do that. I don't happen to have the measurements right off. We'll put one rhinestone. We could actually even put five rhinestones on this to just add quite a bit of bling. I think he might need one down here. And then one more. Remember, we're always going to put odd numbers. Maybe one right up there. 
Okay, and where's our envelope? Oh, we need to stamp our little bird um, on our envelope and on our on our card. So let's, I think that's what makes it really cute. So let's get the bird in the corner here and I wanna make sure there's no ink at the back of my stamp. And we remember he has to kind of stand up straight. Sweet, right? And here's our envelope. We'll put it on the left side. He's kind of looking back over his shoulder, isn't he? Very cute. I like this bird. He's just so sweet. And so here are your two cards. And two different colors, kind of two different methods. If you liked putting the oval, you could definitely put an oval die. Um, cut it with the uh, fancy florets, fitting florets dies. And there are, your two, there are your two cards. Let me put that over like that. I am so happy that my friend Judith sent me that card because I am loving this fold. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's choose a prize, are you ready? Let's come back up because we have a prize to award today. And let me get the prizes out. Next week, I have chosen to give a really good prize. I've been, I've been kind of saving, I've been kind of saving on my postage and so I've been trying to give things like mini Stampin' Dimensionals that will fit in. I got some large envelopes, and some of you know you've won some of these. But I decided for next week, I'll show you in a minute, I'm going to splurge. But for this week, mini Stampin' Dimensionals, and our winner is Lori Mantovi. And Lori, I do have your address. And so I thank you for watching my live last week, last Wednesday. It was on the 18th. And I thank you for um, commenting and putting the word prize. And so I, I haven't seen you on here um, today, but I will get this out in the mail to you because you're, you're a faithful watcher and I really appreciate it. Tammy found a rhinestone on her sleeve and on the cat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's true. It's totally true. If you're a stamper, that's absolutely true. Hi, Lori Taylor. I didn't see you. Okay, so the prize for next week, and I will award it on, ooh, February 1st. Wow, okay. And it is a Seashells 3D embossing folder. I, I don't even have this. I think I got it for myself, and then, I don't know, I'm not really into, I like going to the ocean. We live, you know, not like 40 minutes from the ocean. But I just don't usually make C-type cards, even though I know this is an absolutely gorgeous embossing folder. So it is the Seashells 3D embossing folder. If you want to be entered to win this, put the word prize on YouTube or Facebook anytime up until um, about you know noon on February 1st, because I don't start um, writing down the names and doing the random number generator until until after that. And so I'm also thinking this might even fit in a, in a large, on, kind of a large, the envelope size I have. So we'll give it a try. I just, I like to give you guys nice things. So put prize, because it's a good one. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope you make one of these fun fold cards. And I always almost always, but I will tomorrow, the Lord willing, um, post this on my blog, prettypapercards.com tomorrow. I'll put the dimensions and I'll have more photos so that you can uh, study it a little bit more if you want to. And don't forget, celebration, you don't want to, you don't want to miss